Hi there, this is Marty with OwingsArt.com and today we're going to take a look at the Royal Talons Transparent Watercolor Set. This particular set comes with 24 cakes. Uh, these are round cakes. If they're square, they're pans. If they're round, they're cakes. And Royal Talons manufactures these uh, transparent watercolors in Holland. So that's pretty cool. And uh, when you pull these out, you can see there's just a stackable tray there and you get 24. Now they do sell a 12 color set. You can also pick those up. Uh, but again, uh, I like the variety of having uh, all the colors. I think there's 24 in the entire line. Um, also in this video, we'll take a sketchbook tour with a really great artist, a friend of mine named Kurt Schulzettenberg. He's a naturalist and paints birds and nature scenes. And so stay tuned for that. That should be really fun. In addition to that, I've got some bonus coverage of a couple of different art supplies. One is a Mitsubishi pencil, which I've been looking forward to trying out. It's that you just see it on your left there on the screen. It's a 10B, really dark, and also a little tiny colored pencil kit, the size of a credit card, which is uh, it's like uh, spy stuff. It's really cool. Uh, but first today, I want to take a look at these great and awesome student grade watercolors. These are really marketed towards students and school uh, age people, uh, you know, kind of classroom stuff. So that's the category in which I would like to grade these paints. And I'll, I'll give, the, give it a grading later on. But first, let's talk about these paints as I swatch them out. First thing I noticed among the reds and the blues and the greens was a lot of vibrancy uh, for paints like this. The other thing is when you swatch out black in some of the cheaper lower end watercolors, once it dries, the black turns gray. And that's one thing to look for. And these Royal Talons, it really, the black held up really nicely. And then the other thing I wanna check is they market them as transparent. So let's check and see if they are transparent. So what I did was I drew out three ink lines and then I painted right over those. And you can see pretty transparent paint. Another thing that's pretty cool about these uh, paints is that they mix really nicely. So there's the red with the um, with an ultramarine and I got a really nice purple. Now the green uh, was my fault. I kind of muddied it up by using a lemon yellow. Oh, here's another cool feature uh, of the kit itself. These are snap in and snap out cakes. So if you wanted to arrange the colors in a particular uh, way on your own palette, the way you like them, you could very easily do that. Uh, right here, you just click them in and they snap. You click them out and they snap right back in. Just push a little bit and that's kind of cool. I think that's pretty unique. All right, let's compare these watercolors to some other watercolors on the market. I think that's always a good idea to do and not all of these will be student grade, that's for sure. Uh, but let's compare it to other yeah, some other ones maybe outside its league. Same manufacturer right here, Van Gogh. Uh, that's a, another uh, Royal Talons company. And you can see that uh, they're comparable in some of the vibrancy in terms of um, the reds and the blues. Um, not quite as bright, but watercolor companies can tend to add a little brightener to their watercolor, especially the student grade. Now this is the Lucas Aquarelle paints, watercolor paints made in Germany. These are really nice paints. Um, although I found even in the cheaper lower end student grade, the dispersion was really excellent. Uh, if you wanna check out any of these paints I'm comparing the colors to here, you can uh, just search my videos because I've reviewed every single one of them. This is the Koi. Uh, I guess made in China watercolor set. It's a pretty inexpensive set and I would consider it not professional, maybe student grade, uh, but you can see the colors in comparison, quite comparable. Although these uh, Koi watercolors are a little bit more opaque uh, in some of the colors than, uh, than obviously these transparent ones. Uh, these particular paints here are the Grumbacher or Grumbacher. These are also cake watercolors and you can see here a little bit more opaque again a few different kinds of colors like a viridian instead of the emerald but um, they both have an ultramarine and a, and a nice red uh, and a couple of different well at least a yellow ochre and a lemon yellow so um, yeah those are pretty cool so that's really it for the comparison I mean I think they hold up okay I mean again they're student watercolor paints they might 
they're not going to be single pigment and they're not going to be super light fast and things like that and they probably do have some brighteners added to them but you know overall uh, they're pretty good now one complaint I do have that I think is fairly significant is the cheapness of the box I mean it's got a nice metal top but it's got a plastic bottom which with the pans in it unused it's really weighs more than the than the little uh, lip will will support so see that little button there it really isn't big enough to hold the lid tight to the plastic bottom and when you go to pick it up a lot of times the, the you know there's so much weight in the bottom uh, the plastic bottom that it just falls apart and then if you you know if you tried to hold the lid it just you know breaks apart like you saw and so then you're gonna have to put it together if you're lucky enough not to snap off any of the plastic tabs which I didn't but you know I just wanted to demonstrate how easy this was to just kind of bang around and here I'll show you that uh, again here as I, I'm gonna just snap the lid back in place and you can see uh, you know the hinges there but you know I tried bending the, the lid a little bit in but you could just see how loose it is and then so I could totally see you going to pick this up when you're out in the field or something and then all the pans fall out and crash and break apart everywhere so I tried monkeying around with it a little bit but you know again it just kind of pops right open I can imagine Royal Talons is trying to save a little bit of money uh, because these are student grade but I think this is one of the things that they could fix pretty easily uh, either by modifying the lid a little bit or extending the tab uh, enough so that you know you have to actually uh, put a little pressure to open it well here's my overall ratings for these student grade paints and again this is on a student grade scale so keep that in mind when you compare it to uh, artist water colors that I reviewed so the color really good I like the color lots of variety good you know the colors are what they say they are and um, at least to my eye the vibrancy was excellent I think that's one of the high points of the of the paint for a student grade paint dissolved really well um, dispersion was nice uh, paints go you know roll with the water just fine and the transparency obviously that's the high point uh, or what they market with these student grade paints and they are transparent which is good overall I gave it a six I, I dinged it for a couple of points uh, at least for the construction of the case um, although that doesn't detract from the watercolors at all it could if you uh, you know your case flew open and these cakes fell out and busted apart uh, I've seen that happen uh, when you drop these cakes so you just have to be conscientious I think with how you handle a case but Again, I think Royal Talons could put a little bit, a couple pennies per unit into making that little tab on the outside a little bit wider and they'd be fine. Um, of course, I don't know the light fastness yet because I haven't tested these, but um, I don't expect them to be awesome because the fact that these are really student grade paints meant to, you know, just take out and do some, you know, classroom type work with. Uh, one thing I will say is they're non-toxic. They're ATSM certified, or I mean, they meet the ATSM standards, so they should be pretty safe for kids to use. And again, I don't recommend chewing on the cakes, but you know, the kids uh, shouldn't, uh, they're not harmful for sure to kids, according to the company. Well, what are these going to set you back? Well, uh, if you go to uh, my link, I think you might be able to save a couple dollars. I'll put a link in the description, but you can pick these up on Amazon for between 30 and 40 dollars usually so um, yeah well here's what I liked vibrant colors nice transparency and these are obviously a good value uh, those cakes are going to give you a lot of paint to use I mean one of these kits could last you a year depending on how much you paint here's what I didn't like I really thought that that Royal Talons could have done a much better job on the case construction I think with one or two small engineering modifications they'd have a winner on their hand they just need to look into the case construction and fix that flaw uh, also there's no color names here and a color chart for these particular watercolors was really difficult uh, to find or look for on their website they have everything else but but not that so 
Those are my thoughts on the Talons watercolor transparent watercolor set. Now here's a couple of bonus items I wanted to uh, look at today. I picked up these mini staff colored pencils at wet paint the other day and basically it's about the size of a credit card a little bit thicker obviously than a credit card but inside when you open this up here's what you get a couple of uh, well a set of cute little colored pencils. <laughs> now I'm not saying these are going to last a long time but inside the kit you get in Japanese fashion you get a pencil sharpener and you get an eraser. So this is just a, a cool little clever kit and um, you know the little colored pencils I tried using the sharpener on this and you'll see it's kind of cool it works and the pencils themselves work quite nicely I'm not going to vouch for the um, you know longevity of these colors or anything like that they're just kind of it's just kind of a novelty but I thought it was pretty cool I mean if you're ever desperate and you need to draw you know you really have to and you've got tiny hands this is just the kit for you uh, but I was pretty astounded that the sharpener itself actually worked good so I was able to sharpen these right up with no problem at all and uh, no lead breakage and they got some pretty nice little cores in here and these little tiny pencils I just thought they were cute as heck so anyway I mean I feel like a giant using these little pencils <laughs> it's like hey man you're huge dude but uh yeah, and even the eraser works in this little kit. Anyway, I just thought it was kind of cool, clever little kit, um, maybe for a kid or, you know, somebody with small hands or just to have with you just, just for fun. What a cool novelty. And I've been thinking about this Mitsubishi Graphite pencil uh, for a while now. I've heard about them, and I ordered this one straight from Japan. Took a little while to get to me from Tokyo. But what I have here in my hands is an instrument of mass creation. This happens to be a 10B which is a very soft lead and a very um, a very dark color. Now, immediately you can tell the quality of the pencil when you pull it out. This is a very, very well-made pencil. And you can see the graphite core in there is nice and chunky. It's a probably a 4.2 millimeter core, so you're gonna get a lot of lead in there. And then it's just, the look and feel of this pencil is just really professional grade. Um, it is hexagonal, so it's not going to roll off a tilted work, work surface, and they sharpen up really nice. You can see there, I got a nice good point on the pencil, and here as I sketch with it, you can see it's just very, uh, very nice. Nice and get some nice dark graphite lines in here. Day one, of, uh, all this shit is painted from life, so you have to forgive the, uh, the crapness of most of it. Tell me when you're ready to flip it. Okay, go. Okay. And this was, a, I did a hawk, but he turned. Was so it a goss hawk? Or you know, it was the red tail, so then I I abandoned that one, then st but what, when he turned, then I did the finish wow. it off with that one. He looks good. Yeah, his feet are screwed up, but other than that, he's okay. There's Boo Booey, the hound dog, the Labrador. That's a great painting. And then, uh, this is socks, this is the vulture. Oh, the, yeah. get close to it. Oh, I think the head's great. The head's great, the posture sucks. There's a oh, that's peregrine great. falcon. That's from the Raptor Center, too. Great Orn Owl oh, from the Raptor yeah, Center. I love that one. I saw this one online and I was just like, that's amazing. He almost looks like he's a couple of birch trees. You got the colors perfect. Yeah, that was from the feeders wow. at the National Wildlife uh, thing. Wow, that was so great. And then, then there's just today, that sucker, which with the bad beak and everything else bad about him. Mm -hmm. uh, 
it's and this one's okay, I guess. Oh. And then that one's fresh. Oh, and then yeah. there's the bald eagle thing. It looked kind of puny for eagles. I have to work on that, but oh well. Well, you got his again. The face is just right, though. Yeah, anyway, that's good. Uh, that was a very quick look at Kurt's sketchbook, and now we're on to the National Eagle Center where Kurt and I went, and that's where he took some of his paintings, and I sketched as well. All the birds at the center are have been injured permanently, so they can't fly, and that's why they're there at the Eagle Center, but they have a nice collection of great birds. I'll wait till you see this in slow motion. For instance, that bird in particular, Washaka, he had, uh, he's missing one eye, and he's an American bald eagle. Now this is Donald, the golden eagle, and you can see his, the wing there, he'd be his left wing, or right wing, I think, left, right, right, depending on which way he's facing, is injured. You can see it drooping there. He was hit by a car, and then he'll never fly again, but he was rehabbed, and He'll live out a long and uh, interesting life at the center and be a very good um, tool for education for kids and naturalists and others that want to come and, and visit him. So the Eagle Center is pretty cool and they, do, they don't do a rehabilitation right there. That's the Raptor Center at the University of uh, Minnesota, but they do take the birds in eventually and use them for education, as I mentioned. Here's some of the sketching I did while I was out with uh, well, Kurt and I were out, and uh, it was just a great day to go. And it's indoors, so all the better in a Minnesota winter, and we just had a lot of fun. Well, if you haven't had a chance, please go check out owingsart.com. You just go right to my website. It's right here, owingsart.com. Just uh, scroll down and on the right-hand side of the page, if you zoom in right in this area here, you can join these other good folks. Click follow, and uh, once or twice a month, you'll get a little note saying I posted something new on the webpage, and hopefully it, it'll be interesting. All right, well, don't forget to subscribe, comment. I love to hear from you guys, and share the video if you found it useful. Well, that's it for today. Uh, thanks for stopping by, and until next time, this has been Marty for OwingsArt.com. So long. Bye-bye. Don't forget to check out OwingsArt.com.